Okay. Um, uh, last week we had a quick cover of the things needed to say create a web page. So we covered HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So the reason we did those is because we want to do a little bit more data validation, but this time actually using JavaScript. So you actually need to write some code. As I mentioned, you don't really need to, to know too much about either of these and any of these languages, just the basics. And so most of the visualization actually will be specified. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, mostly like the uh, JSON object we covered the last time. And um, anyway, we'll get to that um, today. <clears throat> so, um, so the particular library we're going to use or introduce is called the Vega Lite. And there was Vega, which is a JavaScript library to use to create realization. And then the Vega Lite is kind of like the lighter version of Vega, which allows you to write much less code. And the authors um, call this a grammar for interactive graphics as shown in the title. In a sense, you need to specify and the validation, like what is the marker and what are the channel and use. And it is almost language independent. For example, you can have the same specification using, say, in Python and using Jupyter Notebook as well. Okay. Uh, hey. Why is not moving? Okay. And uh, there are many different tools or packages that you can do to create validation. So obviously, um, how do you show the cursor? Okay. Uh, obviously I couldn't show the cursor. And so there's Tableau, which we covered, which is in the bottom right corner. So something you can create validation, which you don't need to write any code. And, uh, and some of you will be using say, Python or Jupyter Notebook, and you probably came across, uh, sorry, a bit confused. So and um, so in the top left corner, sorry, top right corner, is something called a ggplot. I think it's something coming from the package R, which is a statistic package. If you um, use R before, you probably came across that as well. And then in the top left corner, uh, is something called D3. And anyone heard of D3 before? No. No? Okay. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. So D3 is a JavaScript library, very popular, and used to create different visualizations. As you can see, as you can see some examples in the screenshot there. And then finally, uh, there's a Vega. So Vega is the one kind of built on top of this ray. And one of the things is you don't need to know that much in terms of JavaScript to create a visualization using Vega. It's almost like a separate language just for visualization built on top of Vega. Hmm. Okay, and uh, the ideas in Vega or Vega Lite um, is the ideas of building blocks. So you want to create a visualizations, use blocks similar to the levels. If you want to build a building, in this case, the background shows like a stadium and you can use uh, small pieces to put them together to form a much bigger construct. In this, and in this case, we're going to be using the single building blocks in Vega Lite and to build complex visualizations. That's the general idea. And uh, so a few important kind of building blocks in Vega Lite. So the first is the data, so which are the, say, the CSV or Excel spreadsheet or in JSON file. So these are data we want to visualize. And you can use the, is also the transformation. 
in a sense, you might in many cases you probably don't want to visualize the data in its raw format. For example, you might do average, you might filter out a certain part of the data, or for example, you do histogram. In a sense, you need to do the binning of the data. Okay, and then another building block, and which is called a mark. So mark is what you are used to represent the data items in the graphics. And so this is exactly the same as we talked about early on. So you're probably familiar with the concept of the bar mark by now. <coughs> and so the next one is called encoding. And so this is where you map the data attributes to the mark properties or what we call channel before. So this is like map the num from numbers to say the size or color or position. So that's the encoding. And uh, finally, it is scale. And uh, again, this is about mapping from the data values to the visual attributes in visualization. And you can have different scales. We have linear scales, logarithm scales, and other different scales in terms of changing how do you map from the values to the visualization. OK. And finally, it has guide. So this is not something we mentioned before, and including the access or legends that visualize the scales. So could be, say, <clears throat> what are the labels? And do you want to use tick or grids? Uh, OK, and we'll see some examples later on. OK. Um, so, um, so other language, for example, like the D3, which is top left, top left, and it allows you to very fine grain control of composing the interactive graphics. So essentially, in the sense, you have to build all the um, graphics from scratch. So you have the entire control of how the visualization will work. But that also means you will need to write a lot more code. And similarly for Vega. And um, because of that, it's also required to have very good knowledge, for example, in JavaScript. And you need to write a lot of code. So the uh, example there is uh, in either D3 or Vega Lite to create a bar chart. And you need to write about 100 lines of code. So that's a lot for creating maybe very simple visualization. OK, on the other side, we have ggplot and uh, Tableau. And it allows you to create a validation very quickly. And because the specification is quite concise, but also it's omitting lots of low level details in the sense you have much less uh, control over the fine details. And uh, in most cases, they, they try to infer sensible defaults in the sense for the part which you didn't specify to try to guess what will be the best value used for those and in a way to reduce the number of code or the operations you have to do. So for example, um, in the Tableau, you select the attributes which map to the x-axis, which map to the y-axis, and Tableau would figure out the most. Okay, where will be the starting point and end point value for the each axis, and whether that should be a line chart or bar chart. And and Tableau always will make a guess for you and something, but something you can change later. Okay. And uh, again, so for these ones, usually it's mostly static and you can do some an interaction, but that's quite limited. Okay. And uh, so in terms of Vega light, and it tries to be something in between and it's mostly designed for export rate analysis in the sense you don't know exactly what you're looking for yet in the data and try to be expressive yet concise. So concise, it just means you need to write less code and expressive, that means you still have certain controls of the validation. But usually these are two conflicting goals. So if you want to be concise, then it cannot be too expressive in the sense lots of the details will be done for you or decided for you. So it's a fine balance between the two. Okay, and to specify interactive multi-view graphics. 
So it actually supports different um, interaction and quite a bit more than what you can do in Tableau. And also it do multi view as well. So the multi view here is similar to the dashboard uh, in Tableau in the sense you can have multiple visualizations. But also um, in Vigalize, sometimes um, they have multi view in the sense you have a more complex um, visualization by say, kind of composing smaller or simpler visualization together. <clears throat> well, we'll see example a little bit later. Okay, and uh, so these are some of the examples that you can do in Vega Lite. And starting from the top left, the histogram, so which we have seen before. And the next one is line chart. In this case, you can have multiple time series, uh, nothing too fancy. And uh, the third one, or the last one on the top row is called strip plot. Here, each line is instead of a dot, but a line segment. It's called a strip plot. And there's some other examples which you can easily do in Vega Light. Okay, and here, and shows a few more, uh, which is a so-called multi-view graph, multi graphics. So this is a bit different in the sense they are not quite dashboard. So on the left, we have the scatter plot matrix. So what it does is actually a matrix of scatter plot. So it's not just a dashboard, but it's like in this case, uh, nine small scatter plots and put together to form a more complex violation. <clears throat> and in the middle, it has the so-called concatenated and layered view. So essentially it's three line chart, which is put together to form one realization. And finally on the right hand side, it has facet view, which looks a little bit similar, but uh, in this case, again, the three simple scatter plot is get and um, combined together to show, to form a more complex realization. And um, okay, and so here is some of the examples of interaction. So for example, we can do mouse over and then the chart will change in the index chart. And in the second examples, and you have this so-called uh, focus plus context technique and ooh, where actually the user can select an interval in the top part, for example here, and then the bottom will change, which is like the expanded view of the top part that's being selected. And so I can see it's selecting this part and then the bottom one get moved. So that's called the focus plus context technique in the sense, and this part uh, will providing you the context where the data is being realized in the overall data. And this is the focus part providing you with more details what the data look like. Okay, and finally, this part is called field and cross filtering and kind of working similar to the focus plus context, but and you can select part of the data in any of these linked views. And when you move the selection and the same data points are selected in the other two views. So currently it's showing, so make a selection in the last view and the other two, the selections will change depends on what has been selected in the last view. And you can do the same in the other two violations as well. Okay, and so these are the many different things that you can do in Vega Light. Um, so some of them can look a little bit complex and we will cover actually uh, most of them. Uh, in these, we have two weeks to cover these. Okay, and so in this and the next lecture, we're gonna cover these different things we just saw before. So first is single view. So this is just one chart and can be different chart, bar chart, line chart, and other types. And the second one is called layered and the multiple view composition. So this is the one we just saw here where you compose uh, multiple simple charts together to form a more complex visualization. 
And finally is interaction. So that's the one we just saw in the previous slides. And for example, how do you do this type of validation? Uh, or this one here, or the cross filtering here. So these are the three types. So we're gonna start with the single view specification, or basically how do you create a single view in VigoLite? Okay, and the, the general idea of creating a single view is very similar to the theory covered at the beginning and in Tableau. Essentially, you need to specify how do you map from your data to the visual representation? And so in example, we can have the data, which is a spreadsheet or CSV file, and it has information about the date, the temperature, and the amount of precipit precipitation, which is rainfall, and then the weather. So this is for Seattle and then date. So that's a quite simple kind of spreadsheet with four columns. And uh, you want to specify the validation so it can turn into, say, a visualization like this. And so here, the x axis is send, stands for the temperature. And then each day is shown as a line. And the position of the line shows the temperature of that day. So we can see the temperature range is somewhere between, let's say, minus. Um, maybe three degrees all the way to about 35 degrees. And there's more days with temperature, say, in the middle between 10 and 20 degrees, even though that is slightly harder to see here. Okay, and to do this, one thing you can do quite easily, try out, and uh, it's using something called the online editor for VegaLite. So this is something which allows you to try out uh, the Vega light quite quickly online. And um, so all you need to do um, is write something similar to this and the violation will be generated. All this is just run in the browser so you don't have to write anything additionally. And later on when you do your homework or do the lab exercise, we, we will actually try to create own, our own HTML files. And then we will write code similar to this and but actually not that much more to create the violation. Okay, and so uh, this is a one of the examples of the uh, Vega lights. So this is actually something I just created. Actually, it's actually remembered. Uh, let me create a new one. We can pick one of the simple examples. Okay, and so this probably will be the examples I'm gonna look at first. I'll try to make it a bit bigger. And so you can see, these are the specifications, and this will be the resulting visualization. Uh, we're going to come back to this um, a little bit later. But OK, and maybe one important thing to remember now is, so what you're seeing here on the left-hand side is a JSON object, as we covered last time. So you can see it starts with a curly bracket, Sorry, and ends, it starts and ends with curly bracket. And everything inside, are, if you remember, the key value pairs. So this is a key, and this is its value. That's all it is. So as you can see, it has a key called the schema, uh, description, data, and mark, and encoding. I'm going to explain how to do this a little bit later very quickly, but then you have these value. So for example, for the schema, the value is a text string, which is essentially an URL pointing to, a, basically that tells you the version of Vega Lite you want to use. And this one, it says version four. But here you can say data, its value itself, we start from there and over here, is another JSON object. And it has values, it says, uh, the value itself is an array, and inside the array, you have these actual a list of JSON objects. So it can be quite complex. But essentially, it still is a JSON object with the key and value. 
the value itself can be another JSON uh, with key and the value and etc. And similar for the mark and encoding. So to put it, I mean, in a simplified term, so create visualizations in Vigalite is mostly about writing JSON object similar to this. So this is probably one of the simpler ones. And later on, we'll see more complex ones. But essentially, it's just creating a JSON object. OK, and uh, for example, uh, let's try to create uh, the same examples as we shown in the previous slide, uh, which is create kind of the code strip plot in the sense each data point is a line segment and you plot it depends on the values in this case will be precip precipitation which is amount of rainfall okay and uh, so first you need to specify and uh, what is the mark and in this case the particular value we're going to call it and tick uh, okay Oh, sorry, first, um, you need to specify the data. And uh, in this case, it's, it's, it's data URL um, weather Seattle.json. So in this case, it didn't really list all the data itself, but instead it is used a URL pointing to a file, and the file is called weather Seattle.json. And you specify the mark and you say tick. And the mark is has some predefined values, and the tick is the line segment, the specific name for the line segment. So if we use our and previous language, we'll just say that the mark is, is a 1D line, which has lens. Okay, and then you say, okay, I want to map the X to particular field. Okay, so then you say X, I want to map to the property or attributes called the temperature from my spreadsheet and oh, sorry from my Seattle dot ah, I couldn't get to the mouse okay and will be the Seattle dash and dash sort of weather dash Seattle.json file I want to use a field called temperature and finally uh, the type would be quantitative so that's all we need to say. And so, and then the Vega light will use this specification, try to create a plot, and then it will be create something we see on the right side. Okay. And uh, so, and um, behind the scenes, and Vega light is doing something else. For example, and it would automatically pick a scale. In this case, it pick a linear scale for the axis. You define X and it, is, it guessed, say the linear scale will probably be and the best value. And it will automatically pick the values. Say the minimum value to shown for the scale will be minus 10 and the maximum will be 40. So these are done by checking the values of actual data set. And it also adds some other properties and automatically for the axis, for example, it sets the title of the axis to temperature. So that's why you see a temperature at the bottom of the realization. And it also say grid equal to true and automatically pick a value for grid. So it decides to fit for every 10, it will set a new tick on the, so these are the things that's done for you automatically. But if you want to change, you can actually also change those. But these, the scale and axis are not required. So usually, and Vega Light can do a quite good guess of what you really want. Okay, and uh, we're gonna try to do this. And uh, actually in the online editor. And so in this case, first we need to get the data uh let me just delete everything okay um so you start with this and you would see some errors message on the right hand side and which is completely fine 
And so your first attribute will be called as data. And uh, if we go back and check, Okay, and in this case, we're going to using a file. So I'm going to say it's URL and its value was weather Seattle, spell Seattle, T T L E dot JC. Expect the token D. Ah, okay. Uh, I think we'll probably have to put quotation mark. Okay, it has to be double quote, looks like. Yeah, so it looks like everything has to be double quoted. It doesn't like single quote, it complains. Okay. Okay, and so you can see now uh, there's no kind of red underline in the specification part. That means at least syntax wise, it can recognize what I entered here. Uh, I just want to show you quickly. For example, previously you have these like a red curly line underline. So that means there's something wrong in terms of the actual syntax of the code. Now it is okay. And it gives you some other different um, error messages. It says, make sure the specification includes at least one of the following properties, markers, layer, facet, etc. So you need at least one of these information. Okay. And uh, so I just want to show you very quickly. So here um, is a URL pointing to one of the files. So these are the files which is hosted on the GitHub for Vigalite. Um, I'm not going to uh, and show you the actual, uh, how do I say, and the actual details, but say particularly that the file and stored on GitHub which is called the Seattle Weather CSV, which is not exactly the same as we saw in the example, but quite close. So we're going to use that one here. So we're going to call this um, Seattle Weather dot CSV. Okay, and if we switch back to the slides. Uh, let me change the view. Um, so this was the specification uh, we saw before. So next one we need is a mark and we want the mark to be tick. So it's shown as a line tick. That's what we're gonna do now. Next we say, okay, so this is my first key, which is called data. Now it has a value, which again is a JSON object. And it's very important and you use a comma. And when you finish one key value pair is one comma. And so the next one, we're gonna do mark. Ooh. And in this case, we want the mark to be tick. Okay, and so now you can see on the right hand side, there's no more errors. It tries to display, but so far it still didn't know what date to show, what the date attributes to show yet, i.e. what the, uh, the mark or what each tick will represent for. And so this is where the encoding part comes in. And you need specified encoding. In this case, we just only specify the X and I'm gonna call the field I'm gonna using. Um, in the example, it says temperature. Ah, 
So I have to put double quote around everything. Okay. And uh, but I think if we look at actually the actual data, oh, uh, let me get in there. So you can see, and it does not have a column called temperature. So it either has the maximum temperature or the minimum temperature. Okay. So for example, I might just use um, precipitation instead. So instead of temperature, I'm going to use precipitation or any other attributes you want. And finally, you set the type, which says quantitative. I think that's what we all understand. Um, type is quantitative. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, it isn't really precipitation. So, okay. And at least you can see and um, it maps to the x-axis. It shows um, the precipitation, which is the properties I want to visualize, but obviously, Obviously, it didn't quite get the value. I'm wondering, did I mistype the name for the property? Uh, I think I just copied, so that should be correct. Uh, let me try something else. Uh, field so called wind. Hmm, still no. The Weather dot csv ah okay 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 I know what I missed and um, so so basically the URL itself here and um, is not correct because actually I missed and um, this data bit so you have to say this is under the data directory and something called Seattle weather dot csv so if I put uh, data slash okay and you can see we have the validations sorry and on the right now so I have a very simple validations is one axis and it shows the precipitation and you can see lots of the days which has very little rainfall between zero and ten and the maximum value you have is somewhere around say 56 57 etc okay and uh, so this is all the specifications that you need to do. So in a sense, it's not that different from the Tableau. In the Tableau, you have to do all these through the menus. You have to open the file. You have to, for example, and drag and drop attributes. For example, the precipitation, drag from the list on the right and drop it onto the x-axis, or the, they call the columns. So and here you just type them up. And these are the things you could change in Tableau. You can set uh, the attribute type or the mark. And here you just write it in, in using the JSON format. So, and Vigal like, tried to minimize the number of things you can specify and try to create the violation for you. Okay, um, so this is probably the simplest one. And let's get back to the slide. Yeah, so we have covered all these already. Okay, and then obviously, uh, one of the, this is probably not the most effective validation to show the data, for example, and it's not very easy to see, and for example, how many days actually have temperature of 10, because all these lines will be just on top of each other. And uh, when you visualize this way, you can't really see how many lines and particularly values. Okay, and so instead, we want to create something like this. And so it's still the same range, same data, but instead of line as a mark, 
or tick as a mark, we're going to use bar and then use the height of the bar to show the number of days with that particular value. So this is the usually known as the histogram. Okay, um, so here we have to introduce something called the Bing field. And in this sense, we do not show each individual data points anymore. Instead, we create bins and we use the number of data points within each bins as the value we want to plot along the y axis. Okay, and so you can see now. Uh, we now set the value of bin equal to true for the x axis. That means we want to create a histogram. And then we also change or add the extra specification for the y axis because we want to use y to show something as well. And in this case, we say I want y to aggregate. So aggregate, again, you can have many different type of aggregates. So counting is one of one. You can also do say something like average or minimum, maximum. These are all different options for aggregate. And then the type for Y axis is also quantitative. And then you should see something we have on the right hand side. So because currently, and um, you can see already, it's automatically created the beans on the x-axis and the y is the number of records. So we're gonna do that in our example. Uh, I have to exit and switch to this. Okay, um, so now first uh, we're gonna add here, I said, now we want to bring the x-axis and now we also want to add a y axis, Oop, not x again. For the y, we're not showing the actual values, um, but instead of the count for the items in each thing. So we will say aggregate. Uh, again, I think we have to use the double quote and aggregate using the count. Ah, so, so now you can see it's already created a visualization for me. And um, you can see on the right hand side, these are the bins. And then the for each bin, for example, for the zero to 10, it has about 1300, which is a lot. And there's much less in between 10, 20, and very few between the 50 and 60. So here, and um, even before I type, adding the type is quantitative, uh, Viva Light already guessed. And so even though I added this in, it's still the same type of validation. So because we're using a different attributes, and so the violation would look a little bit different compared to the slice itself, but the But the way of creative validation is exactly the same. Okay, now come back here. Okay, obviously, and the last, so this is quite the bar we want yet, because so far we still set the mark as tick. And so, and finally, if we want to change this to a bar chart, and all we need to do now um, is to set the mark to bar. Okay, and that to give you the histogram we wanted. Okay, and we're going to do that quickly. Uh, in our example, now if I change my mark from tick and to bar, and you can see that's the bar chart. And you can change this actually to other things as well. I think maybe point, and you can get point. Uh, I don't remember if they have, okay, circle will be filled and bar would give you a bar. So it just depends on the mark. You have different, uh, what I say, different validations or different markers. 
and uh, it will change completely independent of other specifications. Okay. Okay. And uh, so actually, and um, behind the scenes, and Vigalite is doing some fairly complex um, queries, and it wants to say first automatically divide it your data range into bins, and you don't have to specify. Sorry, if I say you don't have to specify how many bins you want, it automatically find out is probably six bins, and each bin is about a range of ten and then automatically calculate how many items in each bin for you. You don't have to do any of these. So this is what kind of, if you have to do this manually and you have to like some write a SQL query, something like this. And this is all done for you and behind the scene in Vigalite. Okay. Yeah, and as I already mentioned before, uh, so Vigalite would try to determine the guide and the bin parameters automatically. So it will decide, okay, what will be the minimum, maximum value for the bin range, how many bins, and what's the range of each bin, etc. And okay, and it will automatically guess the access has to be quantitative if you, if you want to create a range it has to be quantitative and also it will try to generate the labels as well in terms of minus five zero and five etc etc Okay, and uh, so this is and what we have done so far, and you can further increase this by specifying other part of the visualization or other aspect. And for example, um, you can add another one uh, called the color. So that means this is how you want to show the colors in the visualization or control the color in the visualization. So first you choose the attributes you want to map to the color. So in this case, it's using weather. And then you need to specify the type of the weather attribute. And here it says nominal. So the nominal is similar to what we call the categorical. And previously in the sense, it's a value. It's, you cannot do computation or cannot order them. And then the Vega light would automatically create a visualization, which is a stack of the bar chart, if you, mind, if you remember, we covered that before. And again, that's the automatic thing, you have to see, okay, that's probably the best way to do, and automatically assign colors to the different values you have. So you have these drizzle, fog, rain, snow, and sun, and each has automatically has a color. Again, these are the color automatically selected and assigned for you, just to make it a little bit easier. Okay, um, I'm going to do this now uh, in our example. Uh, Carl, just to draw you back a bit, just a question from me. Yeah. What's the connection with GitHub and Vigalite? Okay, um, so you don't need to use GitHub using Vigalite. And the only reason we used VigaLite here is because we want to um, use the data set. Uh, let me show you very quickly. Um, so, okay. And so basically we want to use this data set and we don't want to, for example, something, ah, oh, that's easy, using, uh, let's do another example. Oops. Okay. And the other way to add data to your validation is to actually manually type in all the data you have. 
for example, this one here. So here you have the data, but instead of having, say, a something like a URL, here we did, and you actually type in the values. Okay. And here we don't want to, because there's lots of data, we don't really want to type all of them manually. Uh, so you can see this is what the data looks like, actual data, it's quite a lot. And uh, the only reason to use or involves the bigger light is because we want to load some data set. And in the most cases, you don't have to use GitHub at all. So if we have a large data set, how else do we do we get it loaded then? Okay, so later on, if you need use any data set, most likely you will just load the data file from your computer. For example, you create a file, HTML file, which is including the VGLite visualization. And in the same folder, you have the CSV file, and you can just load it here. We'll see some examples later on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're coming back to and the visualization part. And so, again, if you want to change color, you just add a bit more to your specification. In this case, we want to um, control or set the color or use the color to map to some attributes. And then you always have to say field in the sense which data attributes you want to map the color attribute to. So it says whether, and uh, let me just double check if it's the same. In the, yeah, so it's called the same name in this data set. So I'm just putting weather, oops, weather. Okay, so you can already see, <clears throat> um, even without setting the type. I think uh, it will auto, and if you don't type, don't set the type, it will try to guess. And uh, it just by checking. Uh, wants to see. Yeah. Okay. Again, so this would not change anything because that's the values that Vega like guessed and already set automatically for you. But on this side, you can see the validation itself. Uh, now automatically map the different values of the weather to a color, the color is picked for you. It automatically check what different values are available and set a color for each. Ooh. Okay. Okay, and uh, as I mentioned, so for example, if you do not like the color, you can always customize it. So for example, in this one, and you can see it added another section called the scale. And as I mentioned before, the scale decides how do you map from the attributes to the validation. So this will be the scale mapping from the actual values, which is listed in domain. It says sun, fog, drizzle, rain, and snow. And then you have the range. Range is the value that maps to the different domain values. So the, and the first one, it says hashtag E7BA52. So that's the value or the color for sun. And next one is hashtag C7C7C7. C7, C7. So that's the hashtag for fork and so on. So then you can customize the particular value. So you can see now, the sun is more this kind of yellowish color, and the fog is gray, and drizzle is light blue, rain is darker blue, and snow is purple, etc. Okay. Um, and anyone knows and um, how they specify the color here? So you can see this like hashtag followed by some E7BA52. Anyone knows what that means? No. Sorry, can I say that again? Okay. Um, so you can see here. So this is actually how you specify, specify the color. So it says hashtag 
E7BA52. So anyone knows how do you specify color this way? Anyone? So you probably haven't seen. So, uh, so this is like the, I, I don't remember if we covered this um, before. And this is one way to specify color, specify color and um, using the amount of red, green, and blue. And so the first two kind of characters is for red. The next two is for green and the last two is for blue. Yeah. And then, so the here, they are actually using something called hexadecimal number. Anyone knows what is hexadecimal number? Okay. And so, and we usually just using decimal number. So that means we have 10 digits. So it's from zero, one, two, all the way to nine. I think you all kind of heard of binary, which only has two num two digits, which is zero and one, which is used a lot by the computers. And hexadecimal is says you have 16, 16 digits. And so you have zero, one, two, three, all the way to nine. And then you have A, B, C, D, E, and F. So that will be the equivalent of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And in decimal numbers, but it, it this is um, hexadecimal, so these are still one digit so that's using the in the letter. Does that make any sense at all? Okay, hopefully, and uh, um, then uh, e seven basically just means how how much amount of red that would be. And this is how much of the green and how much of the blue. So this one is actually a bit bigger than the norm, the 52 in the uh, decimal number. And so the largest value you can have for each color is FF, which stands for 255. If we translate that into uh, decimal numbers. Okay. And so basically, this is a much more precise way to specify colors. So that you can just, you can say not just red, but exactly how red or how much maybe blueish or purplish the red would be this way. And okay, let's get back to the actual slides. Okay, and again, so this is just a slide to show um, behind the scenes, Vega Light have to make guesses and try to make sensible decisions to how to show the validation. And for example, and in the, this example, we didn't specify how do you show each different uh, weather values. And you could say on the left is seen here, say no stack in the sense for each bin, you show the value of sun, fog, drizzle, rain, and snow, all starting from the zero of the y-axis, but then as a result, these different values would overlap. So the lower ones will be covered by the bigger values and you can't see them anymore. And instead, the Vega light will try to say, okay, that's probably not very good, the one on the left. So we do the one on the right hand side, which is stack these values. So you can see each of these values much clearer. They're not, say, covering each other. Okay, and then, so for this examples, uh, if you want to compare the amount of records with value as four, 
is not the easiest and because uh, the, the start point is not aligned. So here it shows two examples. The, you can easily see the left one is probably bigger, but not and it's much harder to say exactly how much bigger. And because the start point is not aligned, Okay, so um, so we can change this by switching from a color encoding to a encoding where you lay out the bars for each weather type in space. Okay, so you can see here instead we map the weather to color, and in this one here we map the weather to something else called column. So each weather value now becomes a its own chart. It's like a columns along the x-axis. And then you can compare the values of each weather condition more easily. So for example, we can see for in the middle, which is the sun and which value or which Bing has the most number of records, etc. Okay, uh, so again, so this is only a very small change in the code, but the validations change quite a bit. So if we do this, we can again do here very easily. So we just need to change the color to column. Okay, and then you can see now you have the color, sorry, have the columns one for each weather value automatically already. And you can clearly see, for example, for the, all the sunny days, and it has no rain, it probably should be zero or very small, which is by definition. And for the rainy days, actually, it's not that much rain. Okay. We made that change currently, we lost the color for each value. And uh, that's because we no longer have the color control. And if we want, we can add this back quite easily as well. We can say color, just as what we build weather. Oh, okay. Uh, we can also get the color back as well. So here we're still using the color to show different ways. Uh, and then each chart or each bar chart would have own his own color depends on the weather. Okay, so as you can see, um, we start very simple. Uh, it's a very simple record and tick chart. And we gradually add a bit more. We add Y axis, we add columns, we add colors and becomes more and more complex. And each of these different aspects of variations you can control and very specific. Um, for example, we can just change the line. Let's see what does give you. Yeah, uh, it gives you a line chart. Obviously, uh, the sun, fork, and drizzle because it's quite small, so it's difficult to see. Okay. And uh, we still have a little bit of time. So we're going to show you how do you actually uh, add Vega Lite to your own HTML page. Yeah. And so the online editor is easy to use, but it cannot be included in your own web page or app. So for the next coursework, we actually need to create a a simple HTML file, which as you did in the lab last week, and add the visualization to it. Okay. And actually, this is not very difficult to do at all. You just need some a few extra line of code, but the most of the code is just very similar as what you would otherwise written here. So basically, these you can straightly copy paste to your HTML file, and you just need a few more lines in the HTML file to make it to work. So let's have a look. 
Okay, and so on the right hand here, you can see this is roughly um, what the one would look like. Okay, so first you need to load a few external files. So these are the those files here. These are needed to be make Vega Live to work to work. Okay, and then in the second box, uh, you have you have these style form and info as uh, style formatting information. If you remember, this is for the CSS formatting. This is optional, and you can change the visualization of Vega Light using some CSS. But if you don't have any of those, and it will still completely work fine. But these are the ones you need to have. Okay, and then so uh, and then then the actual HTML part. So what we seen before here uh, is like the head part of the page. So these are not displayed on the page in any way. Mostly just loading the files needed, and now. This is the actual part which creates the visualization. And so one of the most important thing is this div. If you remember, that's a container. Currently, it does not have anything, but it does have an ID called viz. So that's why we can refer to, refer to it a little bit later on. Okay. And then we have this specification. So it looks a little bit different, but Essentially, it's something you can just copy paste from the online editor. So we could just copy paste these ones. And uh, but here, but here, and it is put inside, give it a name called VL spec. This actual name you can change, but it needs to be given a name, refer to the specification itself, as we said. And it's just a JSON object. So it starts with and end with curly bracket. With all the specifications inside, including the data, the mark, and the encoding. The encoding it only has Y and X, so that's all okay. Okay, and the finally, um, you need to specify uh, the visualization by using two things. Okay, so first you have to call this particular method called Vega Embed. So that's a predefined method in Vega Lite. You have to use that to include a visualization on your page. This part cannot change. And then you have two arguments or parameters. The first one um, is hashtag viz. So the hashtag viz refers to this one here. So because we see this div has an ID called viz and we explained Hashtag means ID. So the, it says, so basically that means the element that will be displayed the visualization at is has an ID called the viz, which will be this one. Then the Vega Lite knows where to put the visualization. And then it says the second argument is a VL spec, which is this one here. So this one specifies actual visualization. So whatever you specify here, then will be displayed here, where this div element is. Okay, and then, yep. Yeah. So this will be the last example. Uh, let's try to do this one. So this is we already seen, we created that before, but now we're gonna try to put that inside a HTML file, yeah? I think we still have a little bit of time, so we're gonna do that in the class. So first we will need the actual data file. Uh, so we're gonna, let me, um, and we're gonna do this using the Visual Studio Code. Okay, uh, so this is our view of the code. Currently, it's empty. And I'm going to first 
uh, just create a file, which will be the HTML file, which will have all the code we saw in the slides. And something similar to this, I'm gonna put this into my HTML file. So first I'm gonna just create a file. I'm gonna call index.html and I'm gonna create some simple things. Uh, demo, so that will be my, and if I'm, hmm? open that in my live server, oh, it's here, so you can see, and this is the page, uh, it's very small, currently empty, because inside the body we don't have anything yet, and uh, in the title you can see it's called Vega Light Demo, so that's the one we needed. Okay, and the next part, as we've seen previously in the slides, is to including these files. So these are the links and you need it to, do, to use Vigalite validation. So these are all online. So, so you have to connect to the internet for it to, to work. And uh, I'm not gonna type these, I'm gonna find the link, uh, yeah. So these are the ones you need. So these ones you put inside your head section. Okay. And this will load everything. Otherwise, uh, the bigger light would not work. And as we mentioned, uh, there's this part, which is a style, which is used to format. And it's optional, so we're not gonna do that now. Okay, and then next, uh, we can actually create the visualization. Oops. So first we need to create a div element that will be later on linked to the visualization. So we're gonna just do a simple div and with the ID called this. And the actual ID name can be different. You can call it different names. That's completely up to you. Okay, and for now, an empty will be fine. And then we will create a script tag, which we'll put in our uh, how do I say our Vega like specifications. And so, okay, and I'm gonna just be a little bit lazy here. Can I just copy paste? And do we need the schema? Think that's that. Okay, uh, you need to give the name to your JSON object, which is going to contain the specification. And uh, so VL spec is just short for Vega Light specification. And again, the name, you can call it different things. That's completely fine. Uh, can format it slightly nicely. Okay, and we're going to have a look of this one. So uh, this part is quite similar, but the data part here is a bit different in the sense it's actually including the actual values inside the specification. So the values is an array because you have this curly bracket, sorry, square bracket. And then it's an array of JSON object. Each JSON object has only two key value pairs. One key is A, the other key key is B and the A the value for A is C and the value for B is different numbers. Okay. And then we are creating a bar chart. So I say mark it to bar and then do the encoding. Then it says I wanted the Y, which is gonna be mapped to the A property. Okay, so A here is not a name but the kind of head or the attribute name for essentially as the first column and its type is nominal and for the x I'm going to do an aggregate in this case we're going to do average so previously we saw the examples of using count and then this field will be b so that's the second column in my 
data set and type will be quantitative. Okay, and here is a little bit additional formatting in terms of how you want to display the x axis. You want to change the title to average of B. So by default, it will just use the name of the column, which is B. But in this case, we are not using the Uh, we can actually first, for example, uh, disable this and see if it works. Okay, uh, if we switch to the actual page. Huh? Ah, so, and actually, ah, yes, yes. And so, so far, we define the div, we define the script. Okay, what's still missing is this one last step. If you remember, is this part to actually start the validation is a Vega embed, which when followed by the ID of the div and the variable you define for the specification. So what we need to do again, so this will be still part of the uh, uh, script. So you say Vega embed. Uh, the first one is the ID of my div, so that's the bit, and the second one is the specification, uh, which is called the VL spec. Okay, let's see if now we have any visualization. Yay, we have the visualization now. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, and so you can see and um, it the x axis okay maybe do the y axis first so the y axis is the a and this type is nominal so basically it's just like three bars and a only has three values which is c d and e so that's why you have c d and e here uh, then the x axis is showing the average of b Huh. Uh, so you can see uh, it's calculated average for all the C. So that's two, seven, and six. So the average is 13 divided by three will be 4.33 something. That's why it's there. And same for the D, which is much smaller value, and E is much bigger. And here, we don't even need to specify the heading, sorry, the title of the axis already. It's already automatically generated as average B. Uh, but if you want to, you can specify using this. I can say, for example, I just put something else. And you can see uh, the heading here or the title here changed. And the other things you might do quite easily, for example, if you want to swap the x and y axis, all you need to do is just change in the encoding. This one change to x, and this one change to y. And you can see, okay, uh, it now changed to this. And for example, uh, okay, let's say you want to set the color as well. And you can say color, and then say for color, the field you want to map to is, let's say, is A. Oops. Okay. And so now you can see there's nothing here on the left anymore. Probably there's something not quite right. So I have to fix it. Uh, the best thing to do is using the developer tools to turn on and you can use inspect or something else. And this is what we'll see. And uh, so you would see something like this one. That means there's one error. And if you go to the console and you can see, okay, it says uncaught reference error. A is not defined on the index.html line 43. And you can say, okay, it's complaining about this. Okay. And 
Can anyone tell me why that's an error? Why the A is not correct? Anyone? Is it supposed to be in uh, quote marks? Yeah, exactly. So if we look at all these previous ones, when you specify the name of a column, you always have to put quotation marks. So here, and single quote seems to work as well. Okay, now it worked. Now there's no error here, so completely fine. Now you have three colors, each represent one of the attribute values. Okay, and because we're not doing the binning, so we don't can't do the stack, stack bar chart. And but uh, basically, if you create an HTML file like this, and you just copy over the specification, it would work. So this part will be the exactly the same. No, starting from here. Oops. Starting from here to here will be exactly the same that you were otherwise typing uh, in the uh, Vega Life editor. Yeah. Uh, let me go back to the slides. Yeah. Okay, and so that's the last slide. I think, yeah, and uh, that's all we cover today. And then the next week, we're going to cover more in terms of more complex realization and add a bit more about the interaction as well. Okay, and um, yeah, that's it for today. Let me stop the recording.